When I first got hurt, I was absolutely devastated. Being told that I was gonna have to use a wheelchair for the rest of my life was not something I really wanted to hear. And immediately what went through my mind was all the things I couldn't do anymore. And uh, unfortunately, I believed those things for a very long time. Luckily, um, through years of experience, I've been able to prove myself wrong, and um, I'm just gonna share uh, my experience with you. So today is gonna be kind of like a little informational video. Tonight, I'm going to a concert. And music is really important to me. Music has always been really important to me. It's, it's how I kind of relate to the world. I like to have like my own little soundtrack going on. I like discovering new music and I like listening to live music in different genres and sub genres. And it's really just a full experience for me. And, and um, after I got hurt for the longest time, I, I believed truly that I, I couldn't go to concerts anymore. I thought there's no way I'm gonna be able to get in. There's no way I'm gonna be able to see, be able to see the stage. There's no way I'm gonna have a good time. There's no way I'm gonna hear. There's too many people around. Um, what if I need to go to the restroom? Like I just constantly told myself a story and and that story kept me from going to concerts. Anything that's live is, is really a blast and it's really fun. Uh, and I'm gonna teach uh, wheelchair users and other people with spinal cord injuries like myself um, kind of what I've learned. It's gonna be a, a fun little ride. So let's jump right into it. All right, so the first thing I like to do is go to the actual venue's website. So normally the information for ADA is under the FAQ. So I went ahead and clicked on the FAQ and I scrolled down and I'm looking there and here's a spot where it says is the Tabernacle Handicap Accessible or ADA Accessible. At the very top line it says guests with special needs can call ahead to the box office blah 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 to make us aware of the show and the dates that assistance will be needed. I don't think that's necessary. I don't, I've never had to call ahead of time to any show ever. They, they set up ADA seats, they know people in wheelchairs and people with mobility needs exist. Okay, that's, that's completely unnecessary, in my opinion. Um, there's some more information, yada yada, and it says, um, general admission shows have a designated area for patrons with special needs and one companion. Um, that's, the companion has to buy a ticket. It can't just be a free go for, um, and it's one plus you one plus one person. <laughs> I always make a joke that it is a Cripple Kid VIP because more usually the ADA seats are actually like really good. Um, not always the case, but usually the case, they're usually up front to the left or the right, they're pretty close to the stage, and um, there's not a lot of like obstructions like, like blocking your view. Here we go, there's another important factor. It says the bathrooms are on the first floor are all ADA accessible. And then again, it says, please make us aware of your needs when purchasing a ticket upon your arrival at the venue. Uh, upon the arrival is, is easy enough. That's something that I have done like a gazillion times. Okay, so after I find the information about it, um, I will search um, the name of the venue and then like seating. What the possible seating looks like, where the ADA seating actually is. So here we go, here's a pretty decent picture. This one right here, you can tell that if you look close enough, all right, let me get this to focus a little bit. This little section over here, that appears to be the little ADA section. Okay, well this picture is kind of helpful. There appears to be a little other little box off section right here. Here we go, this is, this is a decent one right here. You can see there's even little wooden chairs right there. So that's where you know that you're gonna go at this particular venue. So now that you've uh, figured out where you are going to be sitting and you have figured out that the venue itself is ADA accessible, you will go to the very front of the line. You are not gonna be going in there so you don't ever have to feel guilty about cutting in line because you're not actually cutting because there's always a separate ADA entrance. Usually always, now most concert venues, um, are old, some are new, but most are old. And like the one I'm going to tonight is, is like an old church, like a very old historic church they converted to a concert hall years ago. And you have to think, okay, how do they push the equipment in and out of this facility? 
big boxes with wheels on it. So for sure, there are ramps somewhere. Asking someone who's scanning tickets, you can simply go, hey, uh, where's the ADA entrance? And they will either escort you there or they will uh, point you in that direction. If you've never been there before, have them escort you there and you will go to the like backstage area where well, they're gonna have their own backstage security that are gonna get you in. All right, this next tip is specifically for my fellow spinal cord injury guys. So when you go out to any place where it's hot, you need water, it's very important. So I like to have a little Camelback with me, but when I go to regular concerts, you can't have the traditional um, little bladder that's in there. That's more for like music festivals, or um, any other type of outside gathering and or event. And it's pretty clever because you just hook this on your back like a backpack and you've got a little water thing you can suction from. When you go to a concert venue, you have to have a sealed bottle. Um, every place has different rules, but more than likely you kind of get a pass when you're in a chair. I've noticed that people um, are like afraid to even look at my bag. If I tell, like, they'll be like, hey, what's in your bag? I need to search it. I'll be like, oh, it's just some medical equipment and I'll zip open the zippers and they're like, no, 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 it's cool. Like, don't worry about it. Um, which I don't fully understand because whatever, that's not the point. The bottom line is um, they're not too strict about it. And if they are too strict about it, usually the ADA section or around the ADA section, they've got extra bottles of water or you can go to the bar and buy water, although it's gonna be really expensive. Anyway, so I have, as opposed to my regular bag that I carry around, this is kind of my concert bag. Inside my concert bag, I've got those two water bottles that I just showed you. I also have my catheters, my wipes, my lubricant, and a very, very special ingredient that is very, very extra important, um, along with the hand sanitizer that you normally do. So I hope when you're doing your urological process that you wash your hands and that you put hand sanitizer on your hands. But when you are in a concert venue, that it's kind of grimy, it's kind of nasty. People are spilling junk and beer and just gross things on the floor and your hands then touch your wheels. And so what I always do is I add in um, a pair of gloves. So if I am unable to wash my hands um, at a sink, this especially works well at any place that has like Port John's or like outside festivals or any place where you can't like properly like wash your hands before you go to the bathroom. Um, I like to have just a set of like natural powderless gloves that I obviously put on so I can remain sanitary and then um, go through my process of um, my catheterization process and then I will obviously remove the gloves and what that does is that just gets an extra layer of cleanliness because uh, I did not know this tip and or trick for a while and it was like clockwork. Every time I went to a show and or a concert the next week, I would pick up a UTI just like that every time. And I was thinking to myself, what's the solution here? Like even times when I was washing my hands, I'm like, okay, I'm literally getting clean. But even after you wash your hands and you push to the toilet, your hands are still nasty from that little short period of time. So I added in the extra element of gloves and that has really tremendously helped. I'll know I'll see you in the car next and I'm gonna get you introduced to <laughs> this band I'm going to see. You don't understand guys, this is, this is the strangest genre of music I think I have ever come upon and I am thrilled to see them live. I've been singing along to their music even though I don't understand the language for about a year now and it is a genre that I've never dove into and another genre that I totally have dived into. This, this genre of music is basically if, if K-pop had a baby with like deathcore. Like it's literally these four little Japanese girls that are singing in Japanese, that are dressed up in costume, that are dancing in synchronization to metal. It is absolutely insane, but adorable, but wild, but crazy, and I cannot wait to show you guys. All right. I'll see you guys there.
getting Richard here. Uh, the next few scenes that you're about to watch have terrible audio. The selfie stick tripod that I was using for um, the rig on my wheelchair had a loose piece of plastic on it and just had a god awful rattling noise. All right, so once you get to the car and you get yourself all loaded up, you're gonna go to the front of the venue. And when you're at the front of the venue, you're gonna try to find the individual who is scanning the tickets and then ask them, I'm sorry, this is really bumpy right? because I do not have this tripod that you already figured out. Well, uh, you're gonna ask them what, where the ADA entrance is and they will get you to the right right place. Hey, what's going on, folks? Uh, ADA entrance. You can just point me in that direction. Okay. Yeah, so just find someone who's, who's got the wristbands. And they're going to be the individuals who are going to help you, help you get through there. Hey, what's going on? Excuse me. Thank you very much. All right, so this is the part where they take you into the uh, separate entrance that we talked about before. Um, usually the, in the older buildings, the ADA entrance is not in the front because there's stairs. Uh, but this is the backstage area where they put all the band equipment in and out. Yeah, sure. All right, so there's... Um, so like some medical equipment in there, you want to go through the zippers, or how do you want to do it? So I can show you, there's a zipper there, some medical equipment there. There's some more medical equipment there. Good to go? Yes, sir. Good. All right, Stellar. I don't want to be on this movie, too. Yeah, can I, can I, right now. Cool. Can I, I can I get a, a little push up this this yeah. hill? All right. Cool. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. See you Thank you, sir. All right, so we're backstage going in now. All right, thank you. All right, so I like going to the restroom before the final band comes on. What that does, that gives me the ability to use the restroom and not have to worry about going during the middle of the show. Um, as we checked out online before, the bathrooms are ADA accessible, so we do know that we're going to be good. Right now we're just waiting on an escort uh, backstage again because they have to keep the band safe and they have to keep me safe and everybody safe. So, All right, currently backstage at the moment with an escort waiting on the restroom. Um, that is our next move right now. A lot of times, oh, hey, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, you'll see there's a little bit of a tight fit, but I'm, I'm making it just fine. Ooh. A little bit of a tight fit, a little bit of a tight fit. Excuse me, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you for the escort, sir. No problem. Have a good one, man. Try to show. I will. Excuse me, bud. All right, and we're back in it right now. Sometimes 
They take you places, like to the basement to get merch, and leave you here. And then you gotta remember how to get your way back by going through doors that definitely say authorized personnel only. And all the elevators. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? All right, that was creepy basement elevator number one. And I'm about to go to creepy basement elevator number two. <laughs> so creepy. All right, I'm back out of the truck where the video full started. I had a blast. I hope you guys had a great time coming along. And I hope this also uh, gives my fellow wheelchair users some, some more confidence and uh, some experience into going to shows. So um, now you can know how to get it done. You know the recipe. The recipe is this video, okay? From start to finish, I showed you how to do research, how to find out if it's accessible, to map out where your seating is gonna be, how to talk to the people at the venue, how to get into the venue, what the bathrooms look like, how to navigate um, the show itself, and getting back out. This is uh, something that I wish someone would have been able to teach to me or if I had the resources available. So uh, thank you for watching and if you like this content and you wanna see more content like this, please sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna be doing my best to regularly upload um, kind of wheelchair hacks and like experience videos and stuff like this where I go and do something that I used to not think I could do or I'm gonna do things that um, I, I wish more people felt they had the freedom or the ability to do. Like I, I, I've got a real, like a bunch of great video ideas up here, and if you if you want to see more, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you're thinking. And I will see you next time.